Wrap your mind around a world without strawberries, watermelons, or chocolate. Humans rely on pollinators such as native bees, honeybees, butterflies, birds, and even flies and bats for these and other important foods around the world. In our neighborhoods, pollinators are in trouble. The food, shelter, and water they need to live, grow, and raise their young is disappearing. You can help pollinators where you live, go to school, and where you play. Hi, I'm your friendly 4-H agent, Miss Patricia, and I'm here to tell you about an exciting project you can do in your own backyard. It's a Be a Friend, a Pollinator project. It was sponsored by Bees Wrap Sustainable Food Storage and produced with the Bee Cause Project and Clemson Cooperative Extension. A scientist that studies insects is called an entomologist. Insects make up the most population of animals in the entire world. And of all those insects, the most numerous is the Coleoptera, or beetle family. Now, insects perform all kinds of wonderful services for us humans. They could be predators and live in aquatic habitats like this dragonfly and eat mosquito larvae. Thank you, dragonflies. We even have a state insect in South Carolina, the praying mantis, it's also a predator and wonderful to have in your garden. Speaking of gardens, my favorite service that insects provide for us is pollination. In addition to wonderful insects like butterflies, we also have bees. And we know bees are an insect because they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, and six legs. Bees are an amazing pollinator, and unfortunately their populations are starting to decline. So what kind of backyard habitat do you have for bees? Carolina 4-H has an amazing pollinator project and you can learn how to be a beekeeper. A beekeeper uses a hive to provide everything that their bees need to be happy and healthy. You can even harvest your own honey. But what if you aren't a beekeeper? Does your yard have what a bee needs? Shelter is the first thing you wanna look for in your backyard for your pollinator friends. Bees need safe places to rest and raise their young. Honeybees live together in beehives, while native bees, butterflies, and beetles live alone. Humans help keep beehives clean and healthy and in return harvest delicious honey. Native bees will use dead plant stems, leaves, twigs, mulch, and even a pile of sticks for shelter. Small areas mowed only once or twice a year can become a pollinator paradise. Less mowing means less pesticide and more food for bees. Flowers of common weeds, such as dandelions and clover, are great food sources. Flowers provide food for pollinators. As they move from flower to flower sipping nectar, they also move pollen with their bodies, helping the plants complete their life cycles. Planting flowers in groups rather than separately helps pollinators save their energy by putting all the food they need in one bee buffet. All living things depend on water, and pollinators are no exception. Natural water sources are all great places for pollinators to quench their thirst, but a simple bird bath or garden fountain or even a shallow dish filled with water can provide the hydration that pollinators need. Now that you know all the things that a bee needs to be happy and healthy, what about your backyard? Let's look at our activity. All you're gonna need is a pencil, a clipboard, your bee-friendly habitat assessment, and a ruler or measuring tape. Okay, scientists, it's time to scope out your backyard to see if pollinators have what they need to survive. Use the questions on the Be a Friend of Pollinators Bee-Friendly Habitat Assessment as your guide. First, observe your location, including today's weather, and write it down. Next, set a timer for two minutes. Make tally marks each time you see a pollinator. If you're not sure, ask a teacher or parent to help you do more research. Next, are there any places pollinators can find shelter to rest and raise their young? Make note of this on your assessment. Now, count all the possible food sources, including trees, shrubs, vines, and flowering plants. Check off any nearby sources of water. Now, prepare to make a map of your bee-friendly habitat. Next, you'll draw a map of the area. Include features such as the water sources, food, and shelter that you noticed on your assessment. Discuss ways you and your family or community can make your space even more pollinator friendly. Refer back to the map if you have questions. Now create an action plan to help support pollinators. Put your plan into action and you will be a friend of pollinators.